Hey everyone, welcome in to another daily editorial here on the KE Report. I am chatting with Jordan Royburn, founder and editor of The Daily Gold. And Jordan, let's focus on silver for this interview and the balance of silver to the silver stocks. We're going to use SILJ as a barometer for the silver stocks. It's a junior silver ETF. Starting off with just the moves today and yesterday in silver. Silver again today is up uh, over $22 now. It's up over $1.30 today, which is over 6%. SILJ, that is up about 4% right now, so lagging a little bit. Similar action to yesterday as well as silver is breaking out from this long-term range it was in. SILJ, well, the argument being that it broke out a bit earlier and is still continuing to move higher. What are your thoughts, though, on the nuances between how silver is moving and how the silver stocks are moving? Well, at least in the last day or two, Corey, we're seeing signs that, um, you know, the strength that we've seen in silver and also the sector at large, I think it's close to coming to an end. Um, You look at the last two days. I believe silver is up like 10%. SILJ is up only 6 or 7%. So you're starting to see silver stocks signaling that they're not quite as strong as the metal. And also, if you look at SILJ, I mean, it's been really gappy this week. And, you know, when you have a series of gaps like that, they typically come at the beginning of a move or at the end of a move. And where we are here and now, uh, these gaps are probably signaling the end of a move. So I know that silver just broke out, uh, just broke out past you know, 1850, 1875, and then also the uh, 21 level, the 2016 peak. Um, so that's very encouraging. But, you know, with that said, and I'm a little surprised that it took out uh, 21 on this move. I mean, now it's as we're speaking, it's trading at um, – I think 23 exactly. Now, if you look at 2013, I'm looking at a monthly chart right now. Uh, that uh, the peak there was around 24, and so that's something I noted to subscribers yesterday. I noted, you know, if silver is going to close above the 2016 high, you know, uh, on a daily basis, which it, I believe it did yesterday. We're getting more confirmation of that today. Then. 24 could be the peak for this move. So um, you could see another day of gains for silver, but the silver stocks, I mean, I know that SILJ is higher, but uh, just looking at various individual stocks, they just don't look all that impressive to me um, considering this move in silver. So um, I, I think the rip roaring moves that we've seen, you know, over the last couple of days and the last couple of weeks are probably going to come to an end soon. So I just I, I think look in a bull market you buy and hold and this this is a time you want to be you don't want to be buying that's that's all I can say. So Jordan, what about the argument that uh, the silver stocks were leading this move higher and now maybe silver is just playing a little bit of a catch up? Uh, to your point, maybe if we see a bit of a slowdown in this move higher or a pause. Is that all it could be? Could it be just kind of a sideways consolidation because of the fact that, well, silver stocks maybe just need a little breath here and now silver is playing catch up? Well, it's possible. I mean, that's we're talking about the degree of the correction that could come. I mean, could it be a sharp correction? I mean, could they consolidate for a number of weeks? I mean, it's all possible. But, um, you know, I I don't think we're going to see a correction that only lasts a week or two. It, It probably will last longer than that. Um, so, and, and again, that's probably, you know, the silver stocks with all the gaps and, you know, with starting to underperform silver the last couple of days, uh, that's just a signal to me that this move is getting near its end. And, you know, I don't, I don't know if I really buy the catch up. It's just, we see markets, this is how these moves in, in this sector work where, um, you know, and the, the bulk of the move in the middle of the move, you tend to get the stocks leading the metal. And then at the very end, you know, the metal gets stronger than the stocks uh, because the stocks get tired and they're just, you know, the, the buyers are just tired. I mean, there's been a lot of buying and I guess too much buying in, in the silver stocks. And now uh, they're getting tired, at least relative to silver itself. So 
that would be my takeaway. So what are your targets then? Do you say silver stops out right here in this 22 region? Does it still have some ability to move maybe a little bit higher, say $24, $25? And if, well, wherever you think that stopping point is, where is a reasonable correction in your eyes? Well, my upside target would be 24. That's the uh, 2013 peak and really the next resistance. If you're looking on the chart, you know, I haven't run any Fibonacci levels yet, but um, 24 is basically what I'm looking at. And if you're looking at, um, you know, just pure price action, if you look at 2014 and 2016, you know, those peaks in the 21s, I think the 2014 peak might be at, uh, it might have ticked 22, probably closed below it. So if silver does hit 24, um, I think it would, I think it incorrects. I think it's probably going to retest. Uh, the 2014 and 2016 highs might go a little bit below. Uh, but look, I mean, it's nothing to worry about because silver now should have a base that's above 19, you know, e even if it has, uh, you know, somewhat sustained correction from 24. And that's going to be a good sign if it corrects, is able to base there uh, with 19 and 20. Uh, being the potential floor, uh, I'm you know eager to see where it closes the month next week, and then um, you know we'll also look at the uh, well. I guess we're uh, what month are we in? We're in July, so we still have a couple more months to the end of the quarter. But the monthly close that'll be uh, the next key, and we could kind of compare that uh, because I think looking at the quarterly closes, Corey, and you go back to 1980, uh, 20 and tw 20 and 21 dollars for silver on a quarterly basis. Those are pretty significant. So, um, again, I mean, still a couple more months uh, to make that quarterly close. But, I mean, if silver can, when it corrects, hold above 19 and kind of base in that area, then it's going to, that's going to be a very good sign that, you know, eventually it's going to be on its way to uh, 27 or 28. Now, Jordan, what about where silver stands compared to where gold is? Gold is technically knocking on the door of all-time highs. Silver is still more than double away from where it peaked out back at the last peak of the bull market. Why do you think there's such a disconnect between how strong gold is and still how laggy silver has been? Because gold is entirely a monetary metal, uh, and and silver is, I like to say, it's about fifty percent a monetary metal and fifty percent an industrial metal. So that's really the reason. But you know, when you get into a uh, a bull cycle that is led by um, rising inflation expectations, and that hasn't been the case for us in the last few years, you know, off and on, and that's why silver's underperformed. But when you get when you get into a period where you have rising inflation expectations, you know, and you have low, negative, falling real interest rates, that's when silver really outperforms gold. And it looks like we could be going into such a period. And during such a period, silver is going to outperform gold. So, I mean, silver, silver is going to move eventually, but I mean, it, it has underperformed over the years just because it's not entirely a monetary metal like gold. It has that industrial component. Yep. Okay. Fair enough. The argument that I have heard and I fully agree with when it comes to the balance of silver and gold. So I don't want any of these silver bugs or really silver investors to construe this as a very negative type of interview here. This would be a natural correction, a natural slowdown. And the important thing here is that there is just a breakout in silver that was led by the silver stocks. If we do get this slowdown and even pull back, what sort of silver stocks are you going to be looking at, Jordan? Because quite frankly, it's a much smaller universe of silver stocks. Yeah, there's really not too many. I mean, I think I, I think it, it's going to be the same thing um, as gold, where I think exploration is going to be a huge driver. Uh, there's really not, I mean, you know, back in the 2000s and even from 08 to 11, you know, you had a handful of junior silver producers that, I mean, you could buy those and hold those. And I mean, they would grow their production and take advantage of uh, the bull market, you know, higher trending prices in silver. But you really don't have that now. I mean, there's really only one or two 
junior producers. I mean, there's some that are really tiny, but, um, you know, I, I don't really pay attention to those. So it's really a game of exploration. And I think the best performers, I mean, if we look at Silvercrest so far, that's kind of a model of what I think will be the best performers. If you can get over a hundred million ounces, uh, with some decent grade and you know, it could be 200 grams per ton silver or 300 or 400. I mean, if, if you get over a hundred million ounces and you have that kind of grade, you can be a 300, 400, 500 million uh, dollar valued company, depending on the price of silver. So, I mean, if you're looking at a junior silver company that has a market cap of, you know, 70 million, 80 million or 50 million, and they can achieve that, you know, they can, discover find, you know delineate 100 million ounces with some grade you know you can uh, that's where you have a shot to you know 5x or maybe even 10x your money so i think you know that's kind of what will be the best performers now even on the exploration side Corey, there's too many uh silver companies that really they, they don't have good grade and i mean there's some and just a side note there's several companies that you know the silver equivalent grade you know looks okay or it might look decent but then you look at their uh, numbers, and it's actually a base metals deposit. So those are ones that I kind of stay away from. Uh, that They say they're a silver company, but you look at their deposit, and it's 30%, 40% silver, and the rest is base metals. I mean, you're a base metals company. You're not a silver company, but that's just a side complaint. But anyway, so I, th I think, getting back to it, I think exploration uh, is really going to be the big driver. And so I, I, I think that's something, I mean, it's hard to find in the silver patch, but that's something I'm focused on, you know, finding the small juniors that uh, really have a chance to uh, discover a hundred million ounces or more with, with some decent grade attached to it. Uh, I think that's uh, what you have to look for, but really like you were saying, you know, we're not being negative on silver. If silver keeps running, which I think is going to happen in the bigger picture, every silver stock is going to rise anyway. So I mean, everything's going to do well, but I'm most focused on exploration. All right. Hey, Jordan. Good chat. Um, I understand being focused on exploration when it comes to silver companies. We've already had a number of examples this year already of good silver drill results pushing stocks significantly higher and stocks continuing to hold at these levels it's a good market for precious metals no doubt about that and i know that it can sound like we're a little bit over analyzing some of these stocks and some of these moves but it is always important to i think especially for your entry points into stocks know when you're buying and well make sure that you're buying some of the better silver companies as well jordan thanks for your time today i hope you have a good rest of your week